Data values can be in one of three data types, numeric, string, and Boolean, also known as logical data type. This challenge focuses on the Boolean data type. Boolean values are only true or false. I'll go to Operators, and I'll get the equals operator. Does 1 equal 1? Click on it. True. 1 equals 1. Does 0 equal 1? Click on it. False. Not false is true if I use the not operator and I use 0 equals 1 in the not operator, I'll get true. I'll click on it. True. 0 equal 1 is false. Not false is true. If I change 0 back to 1 and run it, I get false. 1 equals 1 is true. Not true is false. I'll get the less than operator is 4 less than 5. Click on it. True. 4 is less than 5. I'll change it to equals. Right click, equal. Click on it. 4 equal 5, false. Right click, change it to greater than. Is 4 greater than 5? False. I'll get to AND and OR in just a little bit, but next I'm going to go to Sensing, where there's another simple Boolean operator in Scratch. I'll get Touching Color. Right now it's asking, is the cat sprite touching this color? No, the sprite is touching all white. The background is all white. I'll click on it, and it's false. I can change the color selection. I'll click on it. The cursor changes to a pointing finger. Now I can select what color I want. I'll go to the background. I'll select the white background. Is the cat touching the white color? Yes. I'll click on it. True. I'll select another color. Click on it. I'll select the cat's orange. Is the cat touching the orange color? I'll click on it. No. The cat is orange. The cat has the orange color, but it's not touching it. Orange is not on the stage. White is on the stage. To play more with this operator, I'll choose a new backdrop. I'll go to New Backdrop and select Desert. I don't want to be mean to the cat, so I'll hide it and get another sprite. I'll click on the cat, Info, I'll uncheck Show, and I'll go back to the sprite list. Now the cat's not in the desert, and I'm ready to get a new sprite. I'll click on the new sprite. I'll scroll down. And choose Sun. Sun's a little big for what I want to do. I'll change his size. I'll go to Looks. Set Size. Set the size to 50. And I'll start that with the green flag. Click on the green flag. Now the sun's at 50% size. I want to use touching color. I'll go back to sensing. Get touching color. And I'll select the cloud color. Click on it. Click on the cloud color. Is the sun touching the light blue? I'll click on it. False. The sun's not touching the light blue. It's touching the sand and the hillside. I'll bring it up into the sky. Is it touching the light blue? True. I can try a few more times. Is it touching the light blue? True. Touching the light blue in the sky? True. How about now? I'll click on it. False. It's touching the sky, but it's only touching the darker blue area. First, I want to make it a little bit easier to see these values. I'll go to Control, get the Forever Loop, go to Data and create a new variable. Make a variable. Is touching sky? Question mark. I'll leave it for all sprites. OK. Move it in the middle of the sky. I'll use the set command in the loop, and is touching sky will be set to the touching color value. I'll start the program running. Click on the green flag. It says false right now. I can move it around in different areas. It's true. It's still true. False now. False. False. True. When I move the sun, 
while the program is running, the sun has a shadow. <laughs> the sun has a shadow. That's tough. The shadow shows that the sprite is not a part on the stage right now, so its value may be a little strange sometimes. Only when it's been dropped onto the stage does it have a value, as I'll do now. In order for the sun to be touching the sky, I'm also going to have to have the darker blue. I'll stop the program, duplicate touching color, and change it to be the darker blue. When I click on it now, it shows true. I'll go to Operators, and the question is, should I use AND or OR for the two touching values? The sky is light blue clouds and dark blue sky. Should I use AND? No, I need to touch only one of the colors to be touching the sky. I'll use OR. I'll get OR. Move the touching into one. Add it into the assignment. Move the other touching. Is touching sky will be set to true if the sun is touching the light blue clouds or is touching the dark blue sky. I'll run the program. It says true right now. I'll try a couple more. True when it's touching nose. Still true. Even if it's only touching it a little bit right here. It's not true when it's on the mesa or on the hillside or in the sand or on the cactus. If there is sky here, if I bring the sun up into that, it'll be true there. I'll stop the program. What if I had used AND instead of OR? How would it behave? I'll get AND. Copy. Copy. Put that in to the set statement. Now, is touching sky will be set when the sun is touching the gray and touching the darker blue. I'll run the program. It's false right now. Only touching the dark blue is false. Still false. And it's false when it's down here touching only the gray clouds. When it's touching both of them, it's true. This isn't what I want, but I understand how it behaves. I'm finished with this example. I'll stop it, get rid of touching. I'll go to data and I'll uncheck is touching sky. For this next example, I want to make sure that a radius variable has a reasonable value. Maybe it's the radius for the sun. It must be less than 100 for this program. I'll make the variable radius. Make a variable, radius, Leave it for all sprites, OK. Want the radius less than 100. I'll go to Operators, less than 100. Go back to Data and get Radius. Radius less than 100. I'll add it into the Set statement. Bring Radius down where I can see it. And I'll create the isRadiusValid variable. Make a variable is radius valid question mark. OK. Set is radius valid to radius less than 100. Bring it underneath radius and run the program. 0 is less than 100, that's true. I can try some other values. The radius's variable monitor allows me to set values. I'll double click and it changes to only showing the value. I'll double click again. It shows the variable name and the value and has a slider underneath. I can change the value of radius right now very easily. All these values have been less than 100, so is radius valid has been true. I'll slide it up to 100, and now is radius valid is false. The radius variable has a value 100. 100 less than 100 is false is radius valid is set to false. I slide it back down. 70 is less than 100. True. Is radius valid is set to true. This is nice, but a radius must also be greater than zero. I'll stop the program. Go to operators. Get the greater than. Put zero in on the right. 
get a copy of radius, put that in. Should I use or or and? For this example, both must be true. The radius must be greater than 0 and less than 100 to be valid for my program. I'll use and. Drop it in. Add in our left side and the right side. I'll go to my diagram to explore this more. For this problem, I'm showing some radius values and the various cases to consider. Radius is greater than 0 for all of these cases, except for when radius is 0 or negative 1. Radius is less than 100 for all of these cases, except for when radius is 100 and 101. Radius is greater than 0 and less than 100 when radius is 1, 50, and 99. It is false for the other cases. For radius greater than 0 or radius less than 100, it's always true. This expression is true when the first part, radius greater than 0, is true. When that is false, radius is less than or equal to 0, which is certainly less than 100, so the second part must be true. This OR expression is always true. I'll show this on the number line. Here's the number line of possible values for radius. Radius can be negative, or 0, or greater than 0. When radius is greater than 0, it doesn't include 0, but includes all numbers to the right of 0. When radius is less than 100, 100 is not included, but all numbers to the left of 100 are included. For radius greater than 0 and radius less than 100, both are true when they share green number line areas. For the radius greater than 0 or radius less than 100 case, when radius is greater than 0, it includes all values to the right of 0, or the value can be less than 100. This is all the values to the left of 100, which extends beyond 0. So radius greater than 0 or radius less than 100 is the entire number line. I hope this helps you if you are getting a little confused earlier. I'll go back to my program and try some different radius values. I'll first use the AND case, which is the right case. I can use the slider value on radius to try different values. I'll start the program. Use the slider. When radius is 100, 100 is greater than 0, so this is false. It's not a valid value. I'll slide radius down to 0. It's true all the way down until it hits 0, and then it's false. And if I set radius to a couple more values, I'll choose radius. If I set it to minus 1, I'll run it. Radius is now minus 1 and it's false. If I set it to 101, run it. Radius is now 101 and the value is false. I'll stop the program and try OR now. Swap the expressions back in. This is the case that should always be true. I'll start the program running. 101 is true. I'll change it to minus 1. Set the radius. Radius is minus 1 and that's true. And now I'll try lots of different radius values in between. They're all true. This agrees with the table. I'll get ready for my next example. I'll stop the program. Remove radius and is radius valid from the stage. Now I can try another example. What if I added a Celsius temperature variable and my program does not support Celsius less than zero or Celsius greater than 100? I'll create the Celsius variable. Global, OK. I'll create is Celsius invalid. Make a variable is Celsius invalid question mark. OK. I'll reuse these expressions. Change radius to Celsius. And instead of using is radius valid, is Celsius invalid? It's invalid if Celsius is less than zero or greater than 100. 
should I use OR or AND? A number cannot be less than zero and greater than 100 at the same time. It must be OR. Celsius is less than zero or Celsius is greater than 100. I'll go to my diagrams to look at the different possible values. I have these Celsius temperatures and these different cases to consider. Celsius is less than zero only when it's negative one in these cases. All others are false. In these cases, Celsius is greater than 100 only for the case of 101. That one's true, all the others are false. For the case when Celsius is less than zero or greater than 100, Celsius is invalid only for negative one and 101 cases. It's valid for the other cases. For the case when Celsius is less than zero and Celsius is greater than 100, they're all false. The temperature cannot be less than zero and greater than 100. It's always false. Obviously, the OR condition is what I need. I'll go back to my program and try some different Celsius values. I'll bring Celsius and is Celsius invalid down onto the sand area. Start the program. Is Celsius invalid is false. Zero is a valid value. Unfortunately, using the slider again, all will be valid values, so invalid will be false. I can use the set command. I'll set Celsius to negative one. Now it's true. Celsius is an invalid value for this program. I can change it to 101. Celsius is 101. Run it. Celsius is 101, and it's an invalid value. I'll stop the program and try the AND case. Drop this in. Start the program again. This is the case that should always be false. It's impossible for a value to be less than 0 and greater than 100. 101 is false. I'll try negative 1. Run it. Negative 1 is false. I'll use the slider, try all the different values in between, and it stayed false. I'm finished with these examples and the challenge now. I want to encourage you to use the examples and get experience using Boolean expressions. Play with the different operators you've just seen. Try using the touching color operator with a different backdrop. Or try using other sensing operators, like the color is touching operator, the key pressed operator, and the mouse down operator. But above all, have fun with the challenge. <laughs>